Um, all right, on to jQuery event. Um, and I should say that events are not something Events are not something that are relegated only to jQuery. We'll be using jQuery because it's what we've been working with. But actually, um, most every library that you run into, I, I, I should say every library, I've never run into one without it, has um, some kind of way of handling user events on the page. And there's even native DOM methods. And that's what we're going to look at first. So an event listener is listens for a specific type of input received from the user. An event handler is a function that runs when the input is received by the listener. So if you can remember back to, the, to earlier last week before we talked about jQuery, we're going to say document.querySelector and target a button with an ID of button. Uh, so this selects the element to add the listener to. And then we say dot add event listener. This actually adds the listener. And then um, we open parentheses and we pass it, we pass this function two arguments. The first is the event that we'll be listening for. So we're looking for a click event to be fired from the element with the ID of button. The second argument is what's called a callback function. Um, so this is a function that's going to happen when that event occurs. So if we, if we ran this, uh, if we attached this event listener to our page, whenever the user clicked an element with the ID of button, it would log out the user just clicked. All right, so this is the same listener, but written with jQuery. You can see it's noticeably a little bit shorter. Uh, once again, we target an element with the ID of button. And we say dot on, and then we pass it the event we're listening for. And then we pass it a callback function to run when that event occurs. So anything between these brackets is going to run. So we could write several lines of code that would run whenever that event occurs. All right, usually you want to do more than log a message. Here we have a div that toggles a class when the user hovers over it. So you'll notice that this, the one moving around is my mouse, but we've also got um, two fake mouses on the page. When the user hovers over this div with the class of content, um, we run another line of code that targets that div and toggles the class called focus. And it looks like it adds some styles, like a blue border, a light blue background. Remember, with jQuery, there are many different ways to achieve the same effect. So this hover handler that we wrote before um, is the same as this one below. Instead of saying dot on, we say dot hover. And then the only argument that we have to pass it is our callback function. Um, and in jQuery especially, there are a lot of event handlers where the name of the method is the event you're looking for. So there's a, a dot click, there's a dot submit, um, and this essentially is again a little, just a little bit of syntactic sugar, where instead of having to do dot on hover, you can just say dot hover. Um, and even then, there's the there's a lot of fine tuning that you can achieve by using different ways of getting to the same effect. So this is another way of writing that hover handler. You say dot content on mouse enter. So when the user mouse enters the div, it does something. And then when the mouse leaves the div, it does uh, something else. In this case, again, toggling the class focus. All right, so before I move on, um, are there any questions about the basics of event handlers? All 
All righty. Cool. Um, and I will say, I've been using the, the words listener and handler fairly interchangeably so far. I do want to differentiate. Um, an event listener is, a, is actually the function that's listening for event the event, and it triggers when an action happens on the page, it triggers that event. And you can have different uh, parts of your program listening to that event. But the handler is what you're going to do is like a specific thing that's going to happen when that event fires. So we could actually have different listeners that had different handlers, and they'd all be listening for the same event to be triggered, but then they would handle it in different ways. All right. Oh, I need to edit the slide. It should say form submission. In HTML5, form submission will, by default, trigger a full page reload. It's often necessary to prevent this default behavior. jQuery gives us a handy method for such instances called prevent default. Uh, and you'll actually see prevent default in a lot of libraries. Um, so this is what our basic form submission handle is going to look like. We're going to say form.submit and then pass it our callback function. jQuery event handlers have access to the event that fired them. Notice that we have defined a parameter in our handler called event. Event is the event object provided by jQuery. Um, so in jQuery, your callback function, the, uh, you can define this parameter. And it can either be event. You'll also see people call it just E fairly often. Uh, but whatever you define that first parameter as, it's going to, the thing that's going to be passed in as that first parameter is the event that fired it. We can use the event object. So this behind the scenes, the event is an object that has methods attached to it. We can use the event object to access prevent default as seen above. Um, another common way of stopping event propagation. So um, what would happen is when we do the form submission, that event would trigger other events on the page. And it would eventually lead to a, a full page reload. So that's called event propagation. And another common way of stopping event propagation in jQuery is to return false at the end of your event handler. Uh, and so in many cases, this will actually do the same thing as event.preventDefault. The one difference is that with event.preventDefault, you can put it anywhere in your event handler. Because a return statement exit a func exits a function, if you choose to do it this way, you'll have to put return false at the very end of your event handler. All right, um, before I move on, are there any questions about uh, prevent default and form submission? All right. So an event handler has knowledge of the element that fired it using the keyword this. So the keyword this is a reserved word in JavaScript in the same way that uh, var for variables or function or return. Those are all reserved words that you, can't, that you can't use except for their specific meaning in JavaScript. Uh, and the keyword this is one of them. And the keyword this actually has different meanings in different contexts. And we'll get into a little bit more of it when we talk about objects later this week. Um, but in reference to jQuery event handlers, the keyword this is going to refer to the element that fired an event. So in this case, we have a to-do list. And each of these to-dos on our list are separate li elements. And we want to write an event listener that when one of these li elements gets clicked, um, we grab the, current, the value of that li and we append it to our task list. Um, or I should say we append it to current task. So we'll append it uh, right after this 
current task at the top. Um, that said, if we did that right now, because we're targeting LI values on the page, uh, that's going to grab the value of every LI element on the page and append it up here, which we don't want to do. We just want to append the one that the user selects. Yeah, see, we've appended all of them when we clicked it. So if we, instead of using li to target the value, we say this, jQuery this dot val, we'll target only the li value, or only the li element that the user clicked on. Notice they've clicked on get groceries, and it's resulted in appending get groceries after current task. Are there any questions about how that works? Alrighty, cool. So that's actually the end of the jQuery events lecture. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you break off into groups, you know the drill. Uh, try to pair with someone that you haven't paired with before um, and start to work on the exercises. And after today, you'll be able to build fairly full featured pages. This is really the last uh, piece of being able to build a full featured website to be able to handle user interaction on the page. Um, so without further ado, I will let you get to it.